the blue team. Cyber defenders, security administrators, network engineers, architects, security operations center analysts, malware reverse engineers, and detection engineers. Now, I know it's not as sexy as, hey, the red team, ethical hacking and penetration testing, maybe firing off exploits against these elite vulnerabilities. Look, it's still a necessity for defense across our cybersecurity industry. And that is why I want to showcase a couple free resources for you if you're on the blue team, if you're doing that detection engineering work, the SOC analyst watch floor activity. There's so much out there. And you know what? Let's dive into some of the best stuff first. Digital Forensics and Incident Response, or DFIR, acronymized, right, if that's a word, DFIR. And one awesome and incredible resource, totally for free, available out on the internet, is the DFIR report. Now, these, this whole group of incredible people are always sharing awesome threat intelligence reports, stuff that real attackers, real hackers, real threat actors and adversaries are doing for real attacks, real incidents, real intrusions and compromise. And look, this is a recent one. This is from September 20. 25th, uh, and it's chatting about actually in 2022, about a year ago from now, there was some intrusion where threat actors were using Screen Connect, one of the remote monitoring and management tools, RMM utilities, to deploy ransomware, like the Hive ransomware. And this was kind of crazy, but look, it's something that was seemingly a trend, and I gotta say, still is. Using and abusing a legitimate and signed RMM, or Remote Monitoring and Management Tool, is well-known techniques in tradecraft. So much so that, hey, last year's increase honestly prompted CISA, like the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, one of those acronym things, uh, put out a report, put out, hey, an advisory, put out some of the notice and information that folks can dig into. But this investigation and case was exactly that. The Hive ransomware group taking advantage of that tooling. And look, I got to say, felt kind of good. Hey, we were able to contribute a little bit to this threat intel and the discussion of this analysis. But I'm going to be straight up. This report is massive. It's ginormous. I don't know if you can see my uh, vertical scroll bar here, but look, there is a lot to dig through. And it's incredible. They've got all the flow charts. They've got all the tactics, all the TTPs, tactics, techniques, and procedures from MITRE ATT&CK, discussing like literally tactical information of, hey, what executables ran here, when, why, and where. You've got the command line activity. You've got all of the things that the threat actor does. Drop in cobalt strike, staging PowerShell, HTTP connections, their command and control framework, all the artifacts that you might be able to dig into, and how to even pull some of these apart. Like, hey, extract configurations for malware, maybe track down some indicators of compromise or rogue malicious endpoints. You should absolutely a thousand percent keep an eye out for the D for report. And if you're up for it, hey, maybe some uh, bedtime reading, maybe some crazy cool stuff for you to keep in mind. Seriously, they have so much in-depth material here. I have not even scratched the surface of this article, but all the forensics and all the investigation they do is phenomenal. You can find this online at the DFIRreport.com. And honestly, the best part is look at the very end of the write-up. All the articles here, they do include the indicators of compromise, everything that you can take away with some tactical information, but ultimately detection efforts. Because that's the whole goal, right? Is look, we need to be able to see and have the visibility on hackers and threat actors doing all this nefarious stuff. So they share Sigma rules, they share Yara rules, they dig into all of the MITRE attack techniques and things that would be tactical for you. And with that, if I may, I'd love to dive into maybe our second cool resource for some of the new things coming from Sigma. Now we've been given a whole lot of love to Sigma in the recent couple of videos. Hey, we had a conversation with Naz over on that last video, we had Aurora, the EDR set up, and there's so much cool stuff you can do with it to play and practice and validate that your signatures for your EDR, your endpoint detection response platform, or your antivirus, or just any other hate tradecraft on your device can be monitored. But Sigma just released a nice little quality of life improvement that I think you should know about because it helps speed run a little bit of us getting into the environment here. So I don't know if you've seen, but there is a new redesigned website for SigmaHQ.io. And man, it looks gorgeous, if I may say. Look at just how beautiful and pretty this page they have a dark mode too, by the way. I'm going to click up here on the top to, uh, you know, go vampire mode. Oh, so blue team defense. I have fanboyed all over Sigma and the awesome and incredible stuff that they do. But I do want to dig into one of the cool resources here because look, I'm sure you've seen, we've showcased the giant GitHub repository full of Sigma rules. And that can be a little bit overwhelming and intimidating when you're first kind of, I don't know, trying to dip your toes in this thing here. But the get started button brings you to the documentation, which looks gorgeous 
nice and beautiful and gives you a little bit more intro as to what the heck Sigma is and how you can start to play with it. If you haven't seen the About Sigma, that kind of breaks it down into a little bit of a gist here. If you've heard of Sigma rules before, especially around security operations centers, threat hunters, and all the folks doing great stuff in the cyber defense landscape here, look, you can dig into it. Sigma is helping you cut through logs and events and activities that happen in your environment. But if you actually wanted to play with Sigma, look, you can just straight up install it. Like I know we showcased Aurora just a bit ago, but Sigma CLI is how you can start to interact with it from the command line and maybe write some code, slap together some stuff. Ultimately, it relies on Python. You will need Python version 3.8 and above, and we can just, hey, get it cruising with pip. We can go ahead and install pip3 install Sigma CLI. So for a super quick demo, maybe a little bit of fireworks here, I'm inside of a Windows 11 virtual machine, just a flat cookie cutter install. Hey, say that's a workstation, say this is the endpoint, and I'm gonna hit the Windows key and R to open up the run dialog box. I'll enter WT to open up the Windows terminal here, and I do have Python installed. So I should be able to run Python 3. Oh, it's gonna take it to the stupid Microsoft store. Uh, it's probably added to my path. It's just plain old Python. There we go. 3.12 is installed and set. So I could go ahead and just say, look, let's use Python and let's use pip. Tack M as the module that I'll specify that does come installed now. We can see the help file here. And let's go ahead and install Sigma dash CLI. Hit enter on that and it'll just pull it all down for us. Sweet. Let's hop back over to that getting started documentation and see what else we can cook up. If you happen to be working with a big corporate seam or the security information event manager, you know, acronym, uh, like Splunk or Elk or Carbon Black or whatever, there are tons of these. You can see them, especially in the Sigma Converter Utility. Uh, link for that. Maybe that's another resource here for you. And there's plenty more over in the resources tab. You can hook this up. But honestly, look, we're keeping it simple. We're keeping it small so we can just play locally. You could use Aurora if you wanted to, and we will maybe soon. But look, if you wanted to convert any of the Sigma rules that you might write, you can go ahead and put them into the Splunk format or anything else. Now, I like this one, Windows Defender Threat Detection Disabled, because that's pretty real, right? Hey, Threat actor, hacker breaks into the environment. First thing they do, kill defender. Turn off antivirus, try to go under the radar. If they've gained the admin permissions, the administrator privileges, they can just flip the switch and turn it off. So let me show you that. Let's just copy and paste the syntax here. This is everything that we would need to build out that Sigma rule. Let me just slap that into notepad, windows, defender, disabled, threat detected, whatever the heck that was supposed to be called, .yaml. It doesn't need to have that specific file name, but you know, I wanted to keep stuff consistent here. Let's hit enter, create that file. Let's paste in everything that we need. It's super duper easy. I'll close this. And the way that that detects this is by taking a look at some of the Windows event viewer logs, like the specific identifiers or ID values for Windows Defender being disabled. And these are links here to the Microsoft documentation that talks about all these. Hey, here are some of the specific ones for Microsoft Defender alerts. Maybe that's another cool resource for you uh, if you are tracking some of that. And maybe some of the nefarious tampering that can be done when a threat actor tries to manipulate the AV engine. And if I may say, those alerts are probably things that your security operations center should get alerts for, right? You should get notified. The SOC analysts jump into action. Hey, try to go investigate, go see what's happening. And maybe another resource for you. Look, hey, those SOC analysts, they're doing hard work. They're doing the real in the trenches, on the front lines, cybersecurity defense. And that honestly, I think deserves a kudos, deserves some credit. And with that, hey, check it out. This is gonna be another super sweet free event accessible for you. Let me tell you all about SOC Analyst Appreciation Day. Security Operations Center analysts are always in the trenches. They fight on the front lines for cybersecurity defense, and oftentimes it's a thankless job. They are the unsung heroes of our industry. So to help celebrate these champions, Devo is hosting the third annual SOC Analyst Appreciation Day. A completely free event, on October 18th, Devo established the SOC Analyst Appreciation Day to give some long overdue kudos to SOC analysts and encourage organizations to improve job satisfaction and mental well-being. Packed full with career-focused sessions like finding your role and niche, digging into automation, transitioning from public sector to private sector cybersecurity work, and so much more. I'll be speaking on the rapid response efforts during the 3CX supply chain compromise, and I'd love to see you there. 
If you're a current security operations center analyst or you're fascinated by the work and you want to become one, you should absolutely tune into the SOC Analyst Appreciation Day. It's completely free and a day dedicated to celebrate you and your great efforts. Sign up for the SOC Analyst Appreciation Day on October 18th with my link below in the video description. jh.live slash SOC. Huge thanks to Devo for sponsoring this video. From our conversation with Naz in a previous video, look, you know already that you can just use the online Sigma converter utility to do a lot of this legwork if you wanted to convert a Sigma rule into a specific seam format like Splunk or whatever. Uh, and look, it offers a whole lot of variation for other formats that you could spit this out to. And that is just why I wanted to showcase the Sigma documentation as a real resource for you if you want to go poke and play with this. But Truthfully, Aurora kind of does this already, at least in the example that we were showing just a moment ago with our Windows Defender disabled threat detection. Look, if I move into the Aurora directory that I do have on my desktop, uh, we can see if I fire that up with the dashboard enabled, then look, it'll start cooking. And if I were to literally turn off Defender, like a threat actor, like a hacker, once Aurora is in action here, we'll just try it out. And look, Sigma will detect it because it comes through the Windows event log. All right, it is cruising. Let me open up the virus and threat protection settings so I can go see Windows Defender. And look, if we were to just, again, our administrator privileges, we're play pretend hacker, put our hacker hat on and act as the adversary. Let me just stop Defender. Turn it off, good by me. Device is now vulnerable. And here comes Aurora and our Sigma rules firing that tradecraft, detecting it and giving us the visibility that we could then go start to triage. Now, let me tell you about this third resource. And I gotta say, look, I found this through the DFIR report, just kind of the first thing we were taking a look at. But at the very, very bottom, when we were looking at all of those things that the DFA report would offer us, look, those Yara rules, those MITRE attack techniques, the Sigma rules that we could use, I noticed a really cool link, the Sigma rules archive over at detection.fyi. I haven't seen a whole lot of people talking about this, but detection.fyi offers even more Sigma rules for us to use and play with. And this is like recent, like this is actively getting added to, look, this is October 12th. If we take a look at the read more button here, we can get a little bit more context. This detects when an account was created and deleted in a short period of time. And they have all these tagged, like you can search for these if you really wanted to, or go take a look at recent other new rules. And this is just a little bit easier to digest, I think, and explore and look through than the dump of files in the GitHub repository, like raw, right? Look, you can still copy and paste, you can still play with it, and you'll see other new authors and their contributions, and the references are already included with a preview. So we can go see, hey, this was one some recent blog post from Microsoft, when Entra ID or that old school Azure AD uh, is now doing some shady stuff from threat actor activity. It even gives you related rules so you can go find and see some more stuff. And you can click on any of these tags on the side to go into anything that you might be more interested in. Like some defense evasion work, right? When we were doing some malware development on our own and other videos, look, this is the device code authentication flaw. This is probably based off of, hey, some of the phishing that you could see in action from, uh, again, Microsoft Azure or Entra ID now in those activities. But let me say, look, I don't know if I would just go right out and say, hey, just copy and pace and blindly use these rules in production, right? We should still, you should still, I'm encouraging you or I'm hoping that, look, you can test these locally in your own environment, kind of verify and validate them, especially when you see some experimental status tags. Uh, the whole point is that, look, we're setting you up for an environment to be able to see and monitor and have the telemetry for this activity. Test this stuff in a sandbox first before you just, hey, slap it into whatever you might be using in your actual real production landscape. But I got to say, I love this. I think detection.fyi just makes things a little bit more easily approachable. Scrolling through here and just trying to get kind of a quick synopsis uh, is a little bit more easy to do in my mind than uh, digging through just random file names in the GitHub repository. So there you have it. There are three free resources for you as a blue teamer, as a cyber defender, as a threat hunter, SOC analyst, honestly, maybe even like four resources or five, depending on the other stuff that we might count. Because hey, look, Devo's SOC Analyst Appreciation Day is coming up. And honestly, I hope that will give you, if you're in this industry and this side, hey, doing great defense work, hope that'll give you a time to sort of reflect and see all the great work that you're doing and especially why it matters. I've got a presentation in there just as well going 
going through the sort of nightmare scenario that the 3CX compromise was. So if you don't mind, if you'd love to tune in, I would love to see you there. And uh, we're very, very excited for the event. So thank you all so much for watching. Hope these were helpful for you. And I hope you do keep kicking the tires and playing with some of the stuff. So thanks again. I'll see you in the next video.